I've already published videos in the past about different approaches to create a separate mix for the live stream on the M32 X32 console, but in my church we have the Midas MR18, and it's a smaller mixer, it has less channels, less buses, doesn't have matrices, doesn't have output delays, and so naturally it's gonna be a lot more challenging to do the house mix and the monitor mixes, and do time delay for the speaker alignment, and also create a separate live stream mix and make it sound good all on that small little mixer. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly what I did and explain my reasoning behind it. This is the scene for the Midas MR18 mixer at my church, and to give you a bit of background, before that we used to stream with a phone on a tripod, just that. And then we got a digital mixer, that one, and then we got a camera and a video switcher, and the person that set up the video switcher for live streaming got a TRS camera, cable quarter inch to 3.5 millimeter and plugged it into the headphones output on the mixer because we were using all the XLR outputs and connected that to the first mic input on the ATEM mini. And by default the headphone output sends out the main left right which is the mix for the room and that can only work if you have a very well acoustically treated room, expensive speakers that are very transparent and sound very good and there's no real problems in the room so you just raise the faders and do a little bit of EQ and compression just for the sake of making making the sound prettier, but not really fixing anything. Because if you're doing a lot to compensate for problems in the room or for feedback, then it may sound good in the room, but it will sound awful in the live stream. And that's the first problem. This is the shape of the church. You have one hall right here and another hall like this. And the stage is right here and the music is right here. So the instruments are between the people. And this is the stage here and there are walls here. And you have one speaker here in the ceiling, another here in the ceiling, speaker, speaker. So the main microphone is right here. It's very close to the speakers, these ones. All the low frequency energy gets amplified right here. So if I need to turn up the main microphone loud enough to be heard comfortably, I'll have a ton of low frequency feedback. Not everybody realizes that there's a microphone on a stand that they need to talk into. Some people just stand there and talk as if there's no microphone. So I need the input gain to be loud enough. And what's the solution for that? It's to insert a graphic EQ on the channel itself. Because in the room, it sounds good. The problem is not with the speakers in the room. It's that in that specific place where the stage is, there's a lot of feedback. So I inserted the graphic EQ and did this. Now you may think, what is this guy doing? That looks awful. Yes, but believe it or not, it actually sounds good in the room and there's no feedback at all, no matter how loud I turn the microphone. But if I send that to the live stream, well, guess what? It sounds awful. It sounds very hollow, very empty. So first thing that comes to mind is that I can have a separate bus to make a different mix for the live stream. And maybe I can do it pre-fader so I wouldn't get the insert on it. But on the MR18, Unfortunately, this signal chain is fixed. On the M32, you have the insert that can be pre or post processing. You choose where it needs to be. And also the EQ and compression can be swapped around so you can put the compressor before the EQ or after it. This is the diagram for the M32 mixer. You can see right here, the insert can be either here or here. And if you choose to have the insert at the end of the signal chain right here, the pre-fader tap is before the insert. So if you send that channel pre-fader to the bus, you will not get the insert. But I cannot do that with the MR18. You may think that it would make sense that the insert would be at the end of the signal chain but it's in the beginning right here. If you look at the diagram for the signal chain of the channels on the MR18, you have your insert right here. That is before the pre-EQ tap. So if I go to the sends and choose pre-EQ, I'm still getting the insert. What else would I choose? Input as it's coming into the mixer, send it to the bus. That doesn't make sense. So the solution for that, if you have an empty channel that you're not using, is to use that channel to process that microphone differently. I chose that channel, it was empty. I gave it the same input. So right here I have channel number nine and it's getting local input number nine. So I gave that other channel that same XLR input. So that microphone on stage is feeding both channels. I can do different EQ and compression on the channel that I'm gonna send to the live stream only and I would not send the main channel to the live stream so that would be only for the room and that will be only for the live stream so I'll go to the main tab and turn off the main stereo button so that it wouldn't go to the main mix and the microphone will sound very good in the live stream but keep in mind if you do that the preamp gain is linked 
this is not a digital trim, it's actually the preamp gain. So if you have your microphone plugged into input nine, and this is the gain of your microphone, and you give that same input to another channel, that gain is the same. So if you change it here, it will change on the main channel. Be careful of that. If you need more gain, you can always go to the compressor and add more makeup gain on the compressor. You have plus 24 dB. That's more than enough. And of course, same for the crowd microphone. It's not going to the main left right. Obviously, this is only for the live stream so that we can hear the voices of the congregation in the live stream. Okay, cool. One problem solved. There are other problems too. I have the drummer wear headphones. We have an electronic drum set, but the piano and the guitar still use loudspeaker monitors. And hopefully soon enough, off, we'll switch to in ears. The problem is that in the room, you will feel like these instruments are too loud, so you may turn them down in the room because of the monitors and because the musicians are close to the people. But then in the live stream, it would be too quiet if that was going to be sent post fader. Okay, so what do we do? Do we send the instruments and the microphones pre fader to the live stream? But if we do that, then somebody has to mix the live stream. So how about we send different channels with different tap points to the same bus? Sounds good. A lot of people don't think about that. It's only, oh, this is a pre-fader bus. That's it. That's the post-fader bus. All of them. But you don't have to. If you go to the bus and go to the sense page, you can see the tap points that I chose right here. So for the instruments, all of them are the eyes. There are no microphones for the instruments. And I turned the volume knob on all the instruments all the way up so it cannot get any louder. And the volume of the instruments is mostly the same. It doesn't vary too much. So I sent all the instruments pre-fader because I don't want the change of the level in the room to affect the level that's going to the live stream. Makes sense. The main microphone on stage is not going to the live stream bus, so it doesn't matter what tap it is because it's all the way down. The other microphones on stage that are used for backing vocalists and the wireless microphones and the auxiliary input are all going post fader because these are not set things with a certain level that is always consistent like the instrument. So I actually want these to change with the level that is changing in the room. It makes sense that way. And as for the main microphone channel that only goes to the live stream and the crowd microphone, I'm sending them as a subgroup tap. Be careful to have this off if you're changing only one at a time and not do like I did right now. I'll reload the scene real quick. The difference between a post fader tap and a subgroup tap point is only that the subgroup doesn't have a send level like this. So if I choose post fader right here, you have a send level that is dependent on the main fader. So if I raise the main fader, it will affect the level that is going here. But you also have another gain stage so you can decide if you want it louder or quieter in the bus. When you choose subgroup, it's basically a post fader send, but you don't have a level anymore. You just have a on off. So it's either in the bus or not in the bus. Okay, and now the main fader of the channel itself will decide the level that is going into the bus. So to avoid confusion and make things less likely to get messed up, I chose that the crowd microphone and that other mic channel that is only going to live stream to be going as a subgroup tap. So that main fader of the channel is the level that is going to the live stream without having to go into the bus and sends on faders and change things. And that really simplifies stuff and I'll show you a bit later in the video why. So that's the live stream bus I have a compressor on it that's not doing much it's just compressing like just a little bit when things get loud and I have auto time turned on so I don't have to worry about attack and release times the auto time feature is quite good actually it works surprisingly well and I don't have any EQ going on on the bus. Okay, but we still need to send it to the video switcher. Remember I told you earlier that we were plugged into the headphones output that by default sends the main left right. I want it now to send the bus number six that is the live stream bus. So I'm gonna go to setup and go to the monitor page and right here in the monitor source I'm gonna choose bus number six. And now that headphones output is sending out bus number six that is live stream mix. But we're not done yet because there's one more problem. On the video switcher, there was a ton of noise going into the input, even if there's no sound coming from the mixer. So everything is quiet, everything is muted, and I would still get noise that's like minus 20 or minus 25 dB full scale, which is too much to ignore. That's not negligible at all. And it wasn't obvious why there was that noise. Maybe the cable was picking up interference or maybe because of the electricity. I'm not really sure. But what I did on the ATEM, I opened the control app. Now, unfortunately, I cannot open it offline. 
I'm at home right now. Unlike the control app for the mixer that you can use offline and do stuff with it and save, the video switcher actually requires you to be connected to the machine to open the app. But here's a picture that I took with my phone for you. So what I did is I watched the meters and I turned down the input gain. If there's no sound coming from the mixer, there shouldn't be any sound in the channel. So I kept turning it down until I didn't see any noise anymore in the channel. That turned out to be minus 45 decibels. And then I turned the headphones knob on the mixer all the way up. And that's actually a pretty powerful headphone amplifier. It can output a lot of volume. And the other benefit of having this all the way up is that it can't get any louder. So it can't be accidentally pushed and now everything is clipping. Turn this all the way up. It was just a tiny bit too loud. So I went into the monitor page again and I turned it down by three decibels from here. And that is something repeatable. If I just tweaked the knob until it was loud enough in the switcher, that wouldn't be something repeatable. And then on the ATEM, I did just a tiny any bit of EQ, I did a high shelf at 10 kilohertz, just like half a decibel boost. And then I put a compressor on it. That's not doing much, just a little bit of compression and a limiter with threshold of minus one. And also put a limiter on the master output and also put a limiter in OBS. So I went like this and filters plus limiter and put threshold at minus one. So there's no way that the signal will clip. But we're not done yet because there's one more thing. Whoever is running the live stream is the same person that's doing the slides and putting lyrics and scripture on the screens. And we don't have a separate person to just mix the live stream. And I'm not able to mix because most of the time I would be playing an instrument. I added functionality to the mixer with mixing station. I put this on the computer of whoever is running the live stream. And the only thing they need to do is just open the app and it will search automatically for the mixer. For them, they don't have to choose anything. Now, it's not going to show up because I'm at home. But the app on its own will find the mixer and the name of the mixer will appear here and they would click connect and when they are connected this is what they see it doesn't get any simpler than that this is the channel of the main microphone that is going only to the live stream and this is the crowd microphone and this is an idca that controls the level of the sends for all the instruments that are going into the live stream bus okay so if i change this it's not changing the levels of the instruments in the room it's only changing them in the live mix so what we want to do is when the sermon starts i want to turn down this crowd microphone all the way and turn up the microphone of the preacher by four decibels so that it's an appropriate level of speech for the live stream. And then when the sermon ends, I want to bring up again that crowd microphone and bring down again that main mic channel to be an appropriate level with the rest of the musical instruments. But that's still a bit too much to ask from the person that's running the slides. So I created this button. Worship ends, sermon begins, turn on the sermon button, it turns down the crowd microphone all the way, it turns up the main microphone by 4 decibels, sermon ends, turn off this, crowd microphone comes back in, main microphone gets turned down to the appropriate level. How cool is that? It can't get any simpler than that, just one click of a button. So click on the video on the screen right now and I'll teach you how to create this and not only control the level of faders, but you can control a lot of other parameters with one button as well. So click on the video on the screen right now and I'll see you there.